So many of us, our entire lives have been told to follow your dream, like this inspirational charge to go after your dream. Well, today I'm going to tell you why that's some of the worst advice you can follow and what you should do instead if you are serious about achieving your dreams. I was actually sharing this with a group of students uh, recently and one of the students raised his hand and said, so you mean I shouldn't want to go to the NFL? <laughs> dream killer. But no, that's, that's not my goal today. I'm not here to kill your dreams. In fact, I'm here to do the opposite because I'm not saying you shouldn't have dreams. I think dreams are very important. And in fact, I think dreams are the source of like five very important things in life. Dreams give us a sense of, of hope, of purpose, of identity, belonging, growth. So dreams have good value. It's just that dreams were never meant to be followed. They're never meant to be followed. And I'm gonna show you, instead of following your dreams, here are two things you should do if you're serious about actually achieving your dreams, all right? And for that, let's go to the board here. And I'm going to, let's see, two things. Whoa, that's a big marker. <laughs> Two things you should do if you're serious about achieving your dreams. The first is instead of following your dreams, you want to search your dreams. Unsearched dreams are some of the most dangerous oh, things, I should say, for lack of a better word. It's one of the most dangerous things we can do is have unsearched dreams and follow them aimlessly. I remember back in high school, one of my dreams was to be an NBA basketball player. Now, I had a little bit of skill. I could jump. I, could, I felt like I was competitive, like I understood the game, I could play, and so that was my dream. And here's the thing, you could not tell me anything different. If you would have tried to tell me that I was not going to make it to the NBA, I probably would have fought you and not spoken to you after that because I was that dead set on the fact that I am going to the NBA. But here's the thing, I had never searched that dream. I had never once stopped and thought, okay, wait a minute, am I the fastest? No. Do I jump the highest? Well, I might be in the top three, but no, I'm not, I'm not the highest. Do I shoot the best? No. <laughs> do, do I have, do I pass and dribble the best? No. So then what's the separator? I, ne I never thought or made the assessment in my mind of dream versus actual like skill set. Furthermore, I had never thought about why I wanted this dream. Like why did I want to go to the NBA? And that's what I want to share with you today. If you're going to search your dream, one of the first things you have to get real clear on is why do you want that dream? Why do you want that dream? Because the more I searched this whole dream of wanting to go to the NBA, the more I discovered that what I really wanted more than the NBA, what had me outside, you know, to 10 o'clock at night getting up shots and, and working on the left hand layup, right hand layup, dribble, crossover, you know, what had me out there working on all this stuff was the fact that the only skill sets that I was aware of at that time was my athletic ability. And so the only thing that I could connect to a potential future of being able to make as much money as I wanted to make at that time, the only thing that I could connect to that was playing basketball because I felt like that was the only way I could get the money. That's really what that dream was about when I really started to search it. Because here's the truth. I am the epitome of a homebody. Like that is me all day. I'm a country boy from Southwest Florida, from Immokalee, who I like to be home. And so the idea of traveling on the road like a professional NBA player never even occurred to me. That that's something I would not enjoy. But what I did and would enjoy was the idea of making millions of dollars when I could see no other skill set 
that could point me to potentially making. I didn't know anybody in my circle who made the kind of money that NBA players made that weren't playing in the NBA. In fact, one of the famous athletes from our, our town, his name is Edwin James. If you watch sports, you'll know who he is. And those were the only references I had. And so my point is, it's very important that you ask the question, why? You got to search your dreams. You have to ask why. I would say, I would dare say you even have to ask what? What is it about this dream that intrigues you? Is it the money, like in my case? Is it the fact that this is the only reference point that you have to get you out of the situation that you're currently in? Or you think this is the only, this is the only thing that will get you a sense of hope, future, purpose, identity? And the third thing I would say is, here's a, the, one of the best ways to search your dream. Ask yourself, when? By when will you accomplish this dream? What's your goal for a, a, time, a time frame? And these are important questions because the more we search a dream, the more we can identify the second thing. And actually, before I get to that, I think it's very important when we talk about when, like putting a time frame on the dream. It doesn't mean that you have to have it by that time, but I'll tell you about, um, this is not a book plug, but I think it's worth mentioning right here. I wrote the book, The Mentality of Success. And one of the things that really stood out to people was the section about the five dream types. That's a section I hear about all the time. And the reason why that stood out so much to people was because it gave them a way to organize their dreams, to ask the questions of why, what, and when. And one of the dream types there, there's fairy tale, seasonal, material, shared, service. But one of the dreams is the seasonal dream. That's the when question. Because here's the danger. When you follow a dream and you make it your identity, like I did in high school, what can happen is when that dream, when the, when the season expires for that dream to be accomplished, you may expire with it if you're not careful. There's some of you, you think your life is lesser than or, or not, not going to be as great because a dream you once thought you were going to uh, accomplish didn't happen. And I'm here to tell you that's why it's so important to search our dreams. Because here's what searching that dream. I used the high school dream. I know there's a lot of students who, who want this, but I want you to think about it in context of your dream. The reason why I use that is because when I searched that dream, I realized that there's a lot of great things that I actually took from that season. Those nights, those long nights of being outside shooting till 10 o'clock at night, you know, staying up in my bed, thinking and dreaming and visualizing all this stuff and really concentrating on it and focusing on it. Those are skill sets that carried over into, prof into my professional career. They carried over into when I'm getting ready to go out and speak to, a, you know, 3,000 people. When I get invited to an event that big, of course, I can envision before what that's going to be like. Even standing here in front of, in front of this camera. I would dare say some of the work I did back then and developed then has helped in my career today and in my life today. Working with, you know, teammates in high school and having to learn to deal with different personalities. Now I go into businesses and help leaders deal with different personalities on their team. So my point is this. Searching the dream is important because it will allow you to extract the value out of the dream. That's the difference between following a dream versus searching a dream. You may follow a dream and go right off a cliff with it when it expires if you're not careful. And I think now is a great time to say this. When I'm talking about dreams, I think this is very important. When I'm talking about dreams, I mean the things that you dream of doing that you want to get paid for. Okay? I'm not talking about like the dream of playing golf, you know, that you can go out and work a, a, a business work a business or work in a profession, make enough money to where you can actually play golf, you know, whenever you want. I'm, I'm talking about those of you who have dreams that you want to get paid for. You have to search those. Because you may find, like I found, that I didn't really want to go to NBA. I just wanted that. I wanted that million dollar check. And if that's the case in your life, when you get to the why you really want this dream, 
you may find that that million dollars that you wanted, using the same example, you can get that in several different ways. There are people that literally sit and play games nowadays and make a million dollars. But that's the power of searching, all right? So don't follow your dreams. Number one, search your dreams. Search your dreams, okay? Number two, here's what I would encourage you to do instead of focusing on following your dreams. I would encourage you, let's get back here. I would encourage you to focus on this word right here, becoming. Instead of following your dreams, I would encourage you to focus on becoming. What do I mean by becoming? Dreams are a product of a person. Okay? Think about that. Dreams are a are their byproduct of a person. That's why when you when, that's why it's so easy to get caught up in following our dreams because when we think about our dreams, we're envisioning future outcomes. Like we're, we're envisioning a future outcome that is really desirable to us in the present. And so it gets our heart all stirred up and it gives us kind of the, the, the drive and passion to go after that thing. That's what following our dream looks, looks like. But when you focus on becoming, right? When you focus on becoming, you're focused on that dream, but you're thinking about what are the characteristics I need to obtain to become the person that will achieve the dream. I'm going to say it again. Don't miss this. What are the characteristics I need to obtain to become the person who can achieve the dream? That's a striking difference between following a dream versus becoming the person. Because dreams are a byproduct of a person. And I'll give you an example. One of my favorite places to get content, to get inspiration, to get, you know, principles of life is the Bible. That's where I get, you know, every piece of wisdom and principle that I've ever came up with that's good has come from there. And there's one story that comes to mind. It's in Matthew chapter 9 where Jesus is talking about um, wineskins. He's talking about old versus new wineskins. Now, this is very important to point out. What I'm about to share with you in an analogy, <laughs> I am not saying that Jesus, this is what he meant when he talked about wineskins, because Jesus was talking to John's disciples, talking about pouring himself out, his spirit out on his disciples after he leaves. So it's a whole nother different context. All right. So all the theologians don't come, don't come after me. All right. We're not trying to make this say something that is not saying. What I want to point to is the analogy that Jesus used. Because I, I in, my, in my reading that passage, I thought about our dreams using that same analogy. And that's the analogy he used in wineskin. So I'm not going to read that verse because I don't want it to seem like I'm saying that's what Jesus is saying to us. All right. So I just want to make that disclaimer. But going back to the idea of wineskins, what he's telling them is, or what he's pointing to is, is something that they really understood. Because they, in that time, because of the fact that water was not always the cleanest, so wine was the, the major uh, drink that people consumed during dinner and just on the regular. And he's talking to them about something they're very familiar with. And at that time, they knew that you don't pour new wine into old wineskins. Why? Because new wine into an old wineskin will cause it to burst and destroy the wineskin while also wasting the precious wine. Now, what is what in the world does it have to do with my dream, Joshua? I'm going to tell you. Let's go here. I want you to start thinking. Of, if you get this, you, you will think about your dreams in a totally different way. All right. So let's say we have here the, the dreamer. OK, that was not a good attempt at a picture. Let's try it again. Let's say we have here. This is the dreamer. All right. Let's give you some eyes. A mouth and a nose dreamer. That's the dreamer, okay? Now, over here, we have the dream. I'm so sorry, this picture, I gave him such a small head. Stay with me. So we have the dream, and that dream can be whatever. You fill in the blank here. We have the dream. This is the accomplishment of the dream. In between is the journey. It's the journey from getting the, from the current state to the future dream. Okay. 
And I want you to think about that analogy with the wineskins, right? What often happens, let's say that the dream is in the form of wine. Let's say that this dream represents like liquid form, it's wine. Oftentimes, we will get so caught up. We'll get so caught up with our eyes focused on this right here, the dream. Our eyes will focus so much on the dream. When the thing that we should be focused on, or I should say the person we should be focused on, is right here. Who are we becoming? Who must we become in order to achieve the dream? If the dream represented wine, then that means this dream, this dream right here, cannot be poured out into this person. It can't be poured out into this wine skin. And sometimes we get so caught up looking at the dream and looking at you know, getting caught up in all of the inspiration and the adrenaline that we get from going after something that we never stop to search it and we never stop to ask, what are the skills that this person has? What's the knowledge that this person has over here who, who can actually achieve the dream? Or a better way to say that is, what's the, what's the, skill, what's the new wine skin I have to put on in the form of skills? How must I elevate my skills if I'm going to be, become the person or obtain the characteristics of the person? What's the knowledge that that person has? If you're someone that wants to be a real estate investor, for instance, the difference of following your dream versus focusing on becoming the person who can achieve the dream is instead of thinking about all the outcomes that you desire from real estate investing, you think about what's the knowledge I need to obtain? What do I need to know about financial literacy? What do I need to know about real estate and all the ways to allocate funds to do this? It's so funny to me that when you, when I ask people a question, I'm in an audience and I'll ask, Hey, what would you do with a thousand dollars? This is usually like younger people. They'll say a lot of times, the first thing they'll say is I would invest it. Because that's a good answer, right? This is a good answer. But when you ask, when you search that answer and you say, well, okay, where would you invest it? In stocks. Okay, what stock? Well, I don't know. Well, why don't you know? Because I don't know anything about stocks. So then how can you say that you would know, uh, you would know how to invest a thousand dollars when you don't have the wine skin? Okay. And it's the same thing when it comes to our dreams. You want to be the person, you want to become and obtain the characteristics so you can become the person that will achieve the dream. Otherwise, here's what will happen. Just like the new wine will destroy the old wine skin, that dream would destroy you. And we've seen this so many times in society where people have reached, people have won the lotto only to be broke and broke in because they never obtained, the, the, they never became the person. They never put on the new wineskin. They never had the financial literacy to actually have that, that money um, be well stewarded. And you have to put on the new wineskin if you want your dream to be able to pour through you without destroying you or worse, without you wasting the dream. So today I encourage you don't follow your dreams. Instead, search your dreams and then focus on becoming the person who can achieve the dream. And when you do this, at the very least, when you do this, if your dream is kind of like mine and it's something that's not in your future, like being an NBA basketball player, at the very least, you still win because you searched it and you didn't waste your time going after something. Instead, you looked at what's the root cause of why you want this. And you can focus on becoming whatever person, developing whatever skill, actually, you know, growing your value so that you can achieve whatever that outcome is. So it's, it's a win-win either way when you search your dreams and you focus on becoming the person instead of just aimlessly following a dream. All right. Listen, I hope this was helpful. I really do. Um, if you have not done so yet, I'm told I'm, this is something that's good to do. So I'm going to say this to you. If you have not done so yet, make sure you like, subscribe. If you found this to be valuable, then make sure you subscribe, hit the notification button. And I want to hear from you. I want to hear your comments 
on what you th think about this. If you agree or disagree, why and why not, all right? But that's all for this week. I'll see you all on the next one. But until then, remember this. Success is your destiny. I'll see you on the next one.